What does customer service mean to you? Customer service means to me making sure customers feel respected, they feel valued and they feel appreciated. And that can be done in a number of ways. Customer service is about first impressions. So whenever a customer makes contact with your company or your organisation, whether it's on the telephone, via email or in face-to-face -face at the premise, it's important that you make them feel welcomed, you make them feel valued and appreciated, and you should always act in a manner that is representative of the company brand. The other thing that is important in respect of customer service, or what it means to me, is always trying to go above and beyond what is expected. So if a company does the little things that make it stand out from its competitors, that's a positive thing for the customer. And to give you an example, I stayed at a hotel about a month ago with my partner, and on the way to the hotel, it was raining really heavily. When we got there, the manager, the hotel manager, came straight over to us, he welcomed us, he brought over towels, so he helped to dry us off. He then sat us down in the restaurant area next to a fire, got us a cup of tea each, and those little things just made us feel really valued and appreciated. Customer service is also about making sure the customer becomes a long-term customer of yours. So if you provide great customer service, they will come back and use your services time and time again, and that's good for your organisation because then you are saving having to spend money on advertising. Finally, customer service is about trying to encourage customers to be an advocate of your business. So we want customers to recommend you to other people because the service they have received is so good. And that's what customer service means to me. Thank you. So, um, so what we're going to do is, because of our numbers, we're not going to you know, get feedback from everybody. We're just going to get feedback from one person or two, right? Um, so if anybody would like to share, wow, you guys are fast. Okay, um, so my, my question would now be around, um, what do you understand customer service to be um, from the video you just watched? Um, so I'm going to call Fidelis while other persons can also ensure that they type their comments in the chat. So Fidelis, um, do you want to share with us what you you know gleaned from the part, from what from the video? Um, Fidelis, you can unmute yourself now and speak. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I think uh, customer services are showing ability to show empathy and uh, willingness to go beyond uh, the, the normal to ensure that customers are maintained and retained and make sure they feel good at the end of the experience with a particular brand or company. All right, Sarah, please go on. Okay, can you hear me? Good afternoon. Yes, dear, I can hear you. Good afternoon. Okay, I to me, and based on the video we just watched, customer service is the act of carrying out exceptional services to customers in order to satisfy their major needs as to the reason why they are in your organization thereby making them advocate for your company or the organization you represent by your exceptional services. Thank you very much. All right, and I see our comments in the chat. Um, so Simi says, yes, customer service is all about making a customer to feel valued and well-treated. Um, Olaj Marquez says, customer service is about making sure customers feel appreciated and valued, as well as making sure they become long-term customers. Right. Um, Timmy Tokwe says customer service is about meeting and exceeding the expectations of the customer. And I think the last one, which is Uluwa Femi, says from the video, I understand, understand that customer service means showing up, um, showing customers first impression, making them feel valued and respected, making them feel welcome, making customers come back, and also making them spread the good news about one's establishment, right? So customer service is everything we have said. And to bring it down, um, so we believe customer service is beyond the product or the service. 
And what that means is we believe customer service is wrapped around the product or service. Customer service is about the experience and everything you, everyone has said, right? You said it's about making a customer feel, making a customer feel, making a customer feel, right? So it's about an experience that you create that makes a customer feel bad. It's about an experience that you create that makes the com- customer feel comfortable. It's about an experience that you create that makes the customer want to come back, right? It's about an experience that you create that makes the customer, you know, talk about your business to, uh, to their friends, to their family, because they had an experience, right? And that experience they have builds up to the impression that you give them. So I want you to think about customer service beyond what you're selling, beyond the product or the service you are coming for, beyond um, um, beyond the product and service you are coming for, beyond what they come to ask you for. So it's not about the what, it's about the how. Now think about customer service as how do I give my customer the product or the service that they want in such a way that makes them feel valued, in such a way that makes them, you know, have a positive impression about me and the organization, in such a way that they would leave and go tell friends, family, and bring more customers. So at the end of the day, the goal of every organization is to make profits, and the profit is in the pockets of every customer. And every customer who is happy to spend, to spend and spend and tell other people to come spend, right? So customer service is beyond the product and service. You need to see customer service as an experience that makes customers, or makes your um, customers feel welcome, feel valued, and feel like, you know, they are spending their money in the right places, right? So customer service is beyond the product and the service. And if you agree, please type yes in the chat. If you agree, um, please type yes in the chat. Or you could give a thumbs up. If you agree, please type yes in the chat. Or you could give a thumbs up. Right? Great. Now, um, customer experiences are constant, right? What is not constant is the type of customers you face, right? The types of customers. And I, when I use types, I use what types loosely. Right, because every customer, there are different types of customers, right? So the first one is the irate customer. So the irate customer is that one that you know that's angry, right? And that word for irate customer, right? Um, there's another one called the chatty customer. This customer talks a lot, right? This customer is free, fun loving. This customer talks a lot, right? There's another one, the customer that's wrong. Now, when we say the customer that's wrong, the certain customers come to you and they believe that the information they have is right. However, the information they have is wrong, but they make it seem like the information you have as the one attending to them, your information is wrong, right? So these customers, you have to deal with them in a very special way, right? Uh, There's a special customer, this customer who wants to um, evade you. What this means is this kind of customer more often than not want to to a senior colleague or supervisor or a manager, they believe that you don't have the, you know, you don't have the authority, you don't have the, you're not the right person to talk to. So they believe they should speak to someone who is high in authority, right? Then there's this other person, the positive customer. And we always say this in training that the positive customer is not the customer you see every day. It's the positive customer is that customer that you might see once every day, right? Once, maybe one person out of 10, one person out of 10. Right, most times you have to engage with other customers, right? However, the customer that everyone wants to see as a customer service agent, as a call center agent, is the positive customer because these guys, they love you, they are kind, they are gentle with their words. However, you don't see them as often as you'd want. That's the sad reality, right? So there are basically these five customer types, the irate customer who is the angry customer, and the angry customer is angry because they are dissatisfied with the service or something happened along the way. The chatty customer is that customer who is one who might bore you with her conversation, who might bore you with telling all of the problems that she has and might not even give you the opportunity to speak, right? The customer that's wrong again is that customer who has wrong information but they use the information they have right, right? And the special customer is that customer who wants to always speak to the manager, who wants to always speak to the provider, who wants to speak to someone who is high up there. And the positive customer, once again, is the customer that you're looking to meet every day, but unfortunately, you don't see them every day, right? And these five customer types are require different experiences. Remember, we talked about it. Customer service is about an experience. So the IRS customer is experiencing something, and you need to bring 
an experience to ensure that the IRA customer is happy, right? Um, the charity customer, you need to bring a different experience to the charity customer. They talk long, they enjoy talking. However, you need to bring an experience that makes sure that they don't feel like they are, you are shutting them up, right? The customer that is wrong, also you need to bring an experience that ensures that you are not um, also telling them that they don't know what they are saying, that they are wrong, right? Nobody wants to feel like they are, nobody wants to feel caught put down, I think that's the word I put. Nobody wants to feel like you're putting them down, right? The special customers will you to let them, give them an experience that helps them know, oh, you can actually handle the situation at hand, the challenge that they are posed before you. And the positive customer, you need to also give them a positive experience so that they can continue to be positive customers. All right, negative customer experiences. Now, sometimes customers will have negative experiences. Sometimes customers will have, um, Sometimes customers will have experiences that they are not happy about. Sometimes some customers will not be satisfied, therefore they take it out on you. But one of the one of the wonderful things you could do as a call center agent or a customer service representative is how do you prevent those experiences from happening before? Okay. So you're being proactive to say, I don't want my customers to be unhappy. I don't want my customers to be sad. I don't want my customers to um What's it called? I don't want my customers to have negative experiences. Therefore, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, right? So the first thing you need to do is to listen to customer feedback, right? Listen to customer feedback. What this provides you with is historical records of um, what's it called? So you have customers who have told you what they don't like before in the past. And what you do is basically you um, take all of the feedback that you've gotten from customers in the past and you use it for your future customers or the experiences in the future for the customers. That's saying that, um, to say that um, I, for example, a customer who has called in to say that um, your product got here late, right? What do you now to use that feedback um, to, you know, make sure that every customer gets their product on time, right? So basically you are taking the customer feedback from the past to ensure that customer experiences in the future are great, right? So next one is to acknowledge your customers, right? Acknowledge your customers, right? Sometimes your customers might be really going through stuff, right? And what we say acknowledge them is to say that we acknowledge that you are going through these experiences and we are taking responsibility for that. So it's not just saying that we are sorry, ma, we, this is this is beyond our control, X, Y, Z happened. Um, could you, um, we'll find a way around it, but you need to acknowledge your customers. Take ownership or whatever wrong might have happened. Um, also, let them know that you're trying to fix the problem, right? Uh, also, solve the customer's problem, right? Um, basically, one of the major topics in this course is problem solving. And we'll talk about that extensively. So what that means is um, solving the customer's problem is essential, is pretty essential. And we're going to talk about that in the course. Because one of the topics that we'll talk about is problem solving. How do you solve a customer's problem, right? Another thing is be a customer-focused agent. What, what this basically means is um, a customer-focused agent is one who is concerned about the customer, meaning that you're concerned about the customer as opposed to, um, and what that means is you are planning for the customer. So what that means is, for example, a customer comes in today, right? Or you know you're waking up, this is the morning, you're going to work. So how do you prepare for your customers every day? So for example, I don't let my experiences on the road affect my emotions. I don't let, um, let my experience with the bus conductor affect my demeanor so that when I get to my customer, when I get to work and I'm engaging my customer, I'm not transferring aggression at them, right? So it's to say that, how do I focus more on the customer? So when a customer brings a problem, do I you know, say it's the customer's problem or it's my problem? Because when a customer comes with you with a problem, it's now your problem to solve. So being a customer-focused agent enables you to um, curb negative customer experiences and focus on the customer's needs and focus on what the customer wants and focus on everything that the customer you know, um, brings to me. So be a customer-focused agent. Don't be focused on, let's just get this done. Let's close from work um, or, you know, uh, focusing on, oh, as this, because I think what we've seen most times is some staff can be very nonchalant all they are concerned about is getting paid at the end of the month. However, as a customer service agent, remember you're representing the organization. Therefore, you should be focused 
harm the customer. Because your job is to ensure that the customer has a positive experience all about from the gates um, into the organization and back outside of the organization, right? So be a customer focused agent, right? So before we move forward, um, okay. So there are a couple of things that I would like to talk about as well, which is around how do you um, fix a negative customer experience? For example, a customer comes in angry, right? Um, customer is angry, something has happened, a customer calls in, they're angry, or a customer, you know, um, is dissatisfied, right? How do you fix those experiences? One of the things that we do in the training, we'll talk about that also extensively, right? Um, because of time, we can't cover that now, but in the course, in the real, in the full course, there is a course, there's a, there's a model that we use to teach people how do you fix negative experiences that customers might have. So it's to say that the customer has gone through X, Y, Z, maybe something happened. How do we fix that experience so that the customer is happy again? I know some of us might have had experiences with customers who are angry, who are shouting, who are raising their voices, but how do you ensure that those customers have a smile on their face after that experience, right? So we have a model that we use in our training um, and you will be able to access that in the full course, right? So let's move on to something else, right? So if you are following, please type following in the chat. If you are following, please type following in the chat. Please follow me. And that's super, 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 super. All right. So we have a we have a prompt on the screen. Am I audible enough? Um, if yes, please type yes in the chat. If no, please type no in the chat. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I didn't see any note. So this is a matter of concern. Okay, so I would assume that everybody can hear me then. Um, all right, so on the screen, you should see a reflection prompt. So I want you to think about a time when you had an experience, and this experience could be as a customer um, or not, right? Think about a time when you had an experience that strongly affected you emotionally. So when we say strongly affected, it could be a positive experience, it could be a negative experience, right? So I'm gonna um, get responses from one or two persons who would like to share their experience. And uh, let's keep them short um, as well. So think about it, the time when you had an experience that strongly affected you emotionally. So it could be a time where something broke you or something made you, something happened that made you glad. It could be as a customer or it could also be as a normal person in your everyday life, right? So if you would like to share, um, if you could raise your hand, I would call on you. Come up with and share. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Hope you're having um, a swell time. I am. Hope you guys are having also. So um, my the first time that I had um, a very bad customer experience that affected me emotionally. Can, every, can everyone hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Christiana. Okay. Um, that was earlier this year. So I was very sick, like I had cold. So I went to um, a mini mart or let's say like a restaurant or a cafe close to my school. So I was trying to order for a thing. So I was waiting for my order to be given to me. So um, there's a standing fan that was there. So I spoke to one of the waitresses that, can you please turn off this fan for like a little while? When I leave, you can turn it on that. I'm having cold. And I've checked. There's no place that I can sit there. I would avoid the fan getting to me. She obliged. She went. She turned off the fan. Then after like um, a little while, I think um, one of their drivers also sat beside me. And I was like, please, when you enter, please turn off this fan. I'm just waiting for them to confirm my transfer so I can that he's feeling hot, that he's as he's feeling very why would they I said please when you entered there there was nobody here just me which they agreed and they turned off the fan. At least the least I will stay here is too cold. What do I do? 
It wasn't like some things. So I ignored him. Then after a while, we now went to turn off the fan. And he, once he turned off the fan for the second time, my order was read, like my transfer was confirmed. And I was like, now I'm leaving. Now imagine if he had turned off this fan since I told you. At least I would have left it. These people, they are very mindful of their customers' health. They are very concerned how their customer is feeling was nice but the guy just spoiled everything like he just spoiled like the fine I was supposed to spend there the guy just as in he just spoiled it totally because I left that cafe that he turned on for like um, two minutes or so affected me greatly around feeling mm. so sad so bad at that time so that's my uh, one of the experience that I've had all right. Thank you for sharing. I think one, one, one tip to add based on this experience is that um, customer service is the responsibility of everyone in an organization. So you might think that if you're not customer facing, you're not um, interacting with customers. For example, I experienced when I was based on an interaction with a driver. Right, so everybody is responsible of customer service in an organization, right? Like remember I said, it's an experience, right? She might have had a positive experience with other persons who might have attended to her giving her the drug that she needed, but the driver didn't give her a good experience, right? So it's essential for us to note that customer service also is um, a responsibility of everyone in an organization. All right, also thank you, thank you for sharing, right? and. One of the things that we're talking about now is emotional intelligence. And the idea is how do you manage strong emotions as a customer service agent or call center agent. And the idea is to understand that um, we can all be emotional, right? And I think first thing to say is that emotions are not good or bad. Um, everybody is, for you to be human, you need to be emotional. And being emotional is so that you cry a lot. Being emotional is that you are able to respond to the emotions of people. No matter how hard guy, hard girl you might be, right? You will still be receptive to people's emotions, right? So think about, um, if you see a baby cry, you cannot just close your eyes and walk in unless you are without emotions, which is impossible. Right, so you would always respond based on the fact that you are an emotional being, right? And so when customers come, uh, most more often than not, they are angry, and anger is an emotion. And also, what happens is when they come to you angry, there's a tendency for you to also mirror their emotions because emotions can be mirrored. So think of someone who is smiling, joyful, that energy can rub off. Now think of another person who is sad and the whole room is blue. Before you know it, you start feeling the same way the person is. Because em because emotions are can be mirrored. Can be mirrored. Right? So to say one of the things that's important for customer agents is how do you manage your emotions and how do you manage the emotions of other people? Right. Now that might seem dicey, but yeah. How do you manage your emotions and how do you manage the emotions from other people, right? So, well, first off, what is emotional intelligence? So most emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize emotions, regulate emotions, and strengthen interactions or relationships with people. So for example, from the experience that Christiana shared, if the man could read how she was in the moment, recognize how she was feeling in the moment, he would have seen that, okay, there might be something wrong, therefore he would be obliged to turn off the fan, right? So one of the faults that people have is they have the inability to recognize emotions. And also some other people struggle to regulate their emotions. That's when, for example, an angry customer comes at you and you, you know, tell the customer, don't shout at me. <laughs> and you shout back at the customer. 
It's about being able to regulate your own emotions such that you're not pouring out your own emotions with other people. The same way some people come to work, they have a negative experience with the boss uh, on their way to work or maybe from their family at home. And then they begin to give people doses of that um, aggression, transfer, transfer, everybody just, you know, everybody just collecting their own in the morning, right? But the idea is how do you recognize how you are feeling in the moment? How do you regulate how you are feeling in the moment? And how do you ensure that how other people are also feeling you are able to recognize it and not allow their emotions also affect you such that you are reacting to them? And that's basically the idea of emotional intelligence as a customer service agent. So I want to show you two things right now. Um, so this is a scenario, and I'm going to read it out. So Bola, a customer service agent, answered a call from Akin, an angry customer who had received a defective product. Instead of acknowledging the issue, Bola immediately became defensive, insisting that the cost company's products were usually high quality. Akin's Frustration grew as he felt his concerns were being dismissed, leaving him even more dissatisfied. So as you think about this scenario, right, the customer comes in to report that, oh, a, cost, a product was defective. And rather than, you know, receiving the customer's complaint and trying to understand, you went into a defensive mode to say the product can't be broken, the product can be defective, it's high quality. Right, so think about this scenario in the next one minute. And I'm going to show you another one. Okay. So here's the second one. So Tunde, a skilled customer service agent answered a call from Fumi, an Irish customer, who received a damaged product. Fumi's anger was evident in her words, but Tunde remained composed, genuinely concerned. He listened actively and sincerely apologized for the inconvenience. Tunde offered a swift resolution and went a step further by suggesting a discount on her next purchase. By addressing her concerns with empathy and going above and beyond to rectify the situation, Tunde transformed Fumi's anger into her appreciation and loyalty. Now, so you've seen two scenarios. Now, my question is, what makes the difference? What makes a difference, right? What makes a difference between Bola and Tsundi? Right, what makes the difference in Bola and Tsundi? So I see two hands up. So I'm definitely going to pick someone who has not spoken before. All right, Franklin, go ahead. Yeah, Um. for me, yeah, I actually think that the first thing that I noticed is um. It has to do with emotional intelligence, like you talked about. Emotional intelligence is one thing I actually noticed here because the first person did not care about the, the emotions that came with the customer's complaint, but soon they here did. A female who has not spoken. So I see Nika's hand in the chat. Nika, you can please come up with to respond. Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good afternoon, Nika. Okay. Um, um, what I can deduce from this situation is um Tunde was very empathetic towards the customer. He understood where the customer was coming from, and with his response, he's he has definitely retained that customer. The customer will definitely come back and can also refer, but for Bola. Definitely losing that customer. And you know, once you have a bad customer, that customer can just spoil the whole of the business. Word. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm going to read from the chat. Tunde's ability to understand the customer's dissatisfaction and help offering help on how to rectify the problem makes a huge difference. So Tunde is cool, calm, and collected. Bola is otherwise. Okay, empathy is what makes a difference. Putting yourself in people's shoes or seeing from their perspective, right? Um, thank you, thank you. Um, so basically that's the idea, right? Putting people um, first, or let me not say putting people first, 
Empathy basically is just input yourself in other people's experience and imagine how they feel. Imagine how, what, what are they going through? What are they thinking about, right? If I were the customer right now, how would I respond? And as you see how empathy works, right? So anytime you are faced with a customer who is um, unhappy, who is sad, who is angry, you need to understand that there is something making them angry. There's something making them sad. There's something making them, um, what's the word? Irate, right? And the idea is if I was, if I was to be going through that same experience, would I be angry? Would I shout? Would I want to break something? Right? Would I, you know, would I feel the same um, pain that they are feeling? And if I will, then I, you know, speak to them from that place of, if I were you, I'll do the same thing. So I understand how you're feeling, right? So it's empathy that makes a difference, basically. Emotional intelligence has five elements. And I think in the main course, we'll talk about those five elements because those five elements are the things that make a person emotionally intelligent. So all of all those different um, components of emotional intelligence, we'll talk about that in the training because it's essential. Remember we said the customer's experience is what feeds what they feel or what they think about you. And it also feeds into whether they would tell other people about your business or maybe the message they would tell other people would positive or negative. Because I can go tell other people about a negative experience, which reduces your customer base, right? So it's to say that through emotional intelligence, how am I building a good experience for my customers? Right. So yeah, so that's that about emotional intelligence. We'll cover the how to be emotional intelligence and how to you know practice emotional intelligence in the main course. So phone etiquette, which is the last last part for the for this session. Um, so does anybody know what phone etiquette means? Does anybody know what phone etiquette means? If you do and you would like to share. Okay, Christiana, you've spoken before. Okay, I see you, Lua Femi. Lua Femi, please go ahead. Lua Femi, are you there? Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, my name is Lua Femi. Um, I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, phone etiquette. It simply means um, um, showing manners. There are some um, distinctive um, manner uh, by which you have to speak on the phone when you are talking to a customer. Um, um, you, you, you talk to, for example, you talk to them with um, respect, and then when they want something, you reconfirm whatever they might have um, um, asked. So you, you, you try to reconfirm before you process their request. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, Laura Femi. All right, I, I think we have a lot of comments in the chat as well. Um, so Timmy Tokwai says the do's and don'ts when handling phone calls with a customer. Phone etiquette means having right manner of speaking with or to a customer. Um, if follow us says using the right words on phone or communicating professionally effective while engaging others, right? Phone etiquette is having a polite behavior over the call. Franklin says phone etiquette basically refers to the polite and respectful behavior expected when talking to someone over the phone. Wow, wow. this is so many. I think we're, we're basically saying the same thing. We're basically saying the same thing. So I want to play a video for us. Hello. Hello, how may I help you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine. How may I help you? Can I ask you a certain question again? Can I ask, yes, can I ask you a question? Please, I, was, I started using this number this year when I I'm come from Nigeria to Ghana. Mm -hmm. And I I come and I, I get a certain friend. I have a friend here in Ghana. Her name was called Mr. Ali. You are you have been giving that person that friend that friend a bonus every every set of day you have been giving a credit 60, 20 percent and 
this thing, even to enter Ghana City, for me, what did I do to you? I've been buying credit, I swear to you, since I started using this. When you buy, when, when, you, when, you, use, when you use the line, that doesn't mean when you use the line, will give you a bonus. Give for the, for, no, for Unless that. you're having a promotion. Yeah. At the moment you're having a promotion, when you buy the credit, you get a promotion. Yeah, that one there, I know. Uh, last, yes, the last time. That we, are not, we are not having any, any promotion that when you're using the line, will give you a bonus. Credit. Ah, but if the person, Ali was there now and received some message Please, that. I'm saying that. We are having a promotion. Yeah. You are talking. You are talking. Let me to talk, man. <laughs> you are talking. Let me to talk. Then you cut my mouth. Eh? Ali was there and I received a message that you have a bonus 20 Ghana City. That's for any shaky reason. Did Ali work for you? <laughs> or oh, is Ali your partner? Or oh, is Ali your boyfriend? <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? Now, wow. Eh? Are you there? Sweetie? Are you done? No, I'm not finished. Okay, go ahead. I'm listening. Eh? I'm listening. Then, for me, let me know. For me, for me, I was there since the day I started using my credit. I'm saying when you use the line, we don't give credit, okay? If I'm using the line, you don't give credit. No, please, you don't. Please, you don't give bonus. Yes. Even I, I've, I've been buying. MTN. Yeah, I've been buying credit better than Ali. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back. I see some of us have been cracked up in the chat. All right, so basically, what are your major takeaways from this video? Right. Um. Anybody wants to share? Anybody? Hope. Okay, I see Hope's hands up. All right, Hope, you mind coming up here to share? Hello? Hello, Hope. Yeah, good afternoon. Although this sound has been known before now, but let me just say it since you called my name. <laughs> can can you hear me? Yes, I can love and play. Um, all right. Although this um, last video was kind of a comedy anyways. <laughs> but um, what I could take from it was that, um, first of all, um, she did have a good phone etiquette in the sense that the way she answered the call at first, it wasn't really informative. And um, when you're answering a customer, uh, your call needs to be informative. You need to... After answering the call, you need to state your, your name, like greet, give the person a pleasant day, state your name and the designation where you are, so that um, if the person at the end will be able to know who exactly is talking with. And um, apart from that also, she, she wasn't really being polite at all, because as if she stated her name, and gave information. The person have already made a complaint of what he wanted, of what uh, was the problem. It's not less for her to give a direct, um, direct information or of what um, the whole problem was. Or probably, if it's not in her hands to handle, direct him to someone else who can handle the issue for him. So that's just it, anyways. That's what I feel could be the problem because you can only talk about yourself the customer service agents you can't talk about the customer and you can't actually um tell the customer what to be saying and what not to say and you can't from over the phone be shouting at the customer so you can only work on yourself how you handle it on your own end how you interact with the customer from your own end so that's what i feel thank you all right thank you so much hope um i think i'll take one more same, uh, um, am I on? Mm Hello, -hmm. am I on? You are yes, on. I can hear are. you very well. Uh, Hello, I can hear you. Okay. okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this program is really going well, and we thank God for the sponsors and those that brought it to us. Okay, concerning the video that we just watched as regards the phone etiquette. I think uh, something was lacking where from the customer service um, personnel. In a sense that the language the client was using does not correspond with 
that which the uh, the customer service agent was using. The, the the person that was making that was calling for the and complaining was using a mixture of uh, broken English and pidgin and all, all of that. So it is expected that the customer agent come low, which kind of um, use it, maybe use a broken uh, broke uh, pidgin English. I believe that would have settled. That would have made the that would have made the the, the client to even come come down to listen to what she has to say. That's where. Uh, effective communication comes it's not only by speaking Queen's English that effective communication is uh, superb. It's only get it's, it's also getting to you know know the language of clients. Some might not know how to speak English, and you you speaking English for them might just create more problem. But if they use pidgin English for you, then you have to come at their level in order for them to understand. It's all about it's all about it's all about uh, speaking and understanding from both ends. So I believe that's where they were having clashes, major clashes, because the the client was not ready to listen to what she was saying because he she she was not speaking his language or the language he understands. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Nicole. Um. So basically, building off of what everyone has said, right? Um. Okay. Let me just wait. Um, so the idea is, and also what was I expecting to give you was right like that. But the idea is, um, as a customer service person, call center agent, everything you do should also be tailored to the customer. One, second thing is, I mean, this video, the lady um, was not patient enough, right? And one of the things that you experience is customers that would, um, for lack of a better word, it will put their foot on your neck, right? And the idea is how can you comfort yourself? How can you maintain professionalism throughout the entire process, right? Um, how can you ensure that um, no matter what comes from the customer, you are still able to compose yourself, you are still able to um, address the customer uh, respectfully. Let me just put the word respectfully. Respectfully, rather, right? So basically, phone etiquette is about um, the way you use your manners to represent yourself and your organization um, to the customers via telephone conversation. This is saying that how do we present ourselves as call center agents or customer service um, representatives and at the organization? Because one thing that happens is if I have a conversation with you, at the back of my mind, I'm having a conversation with your organization. For example, if you say something bad to me over that call, I would end up saying, this organization, they are very rude, they're very disrespectful. I just spoke to one of their staff on, over the phone and see the way she was just throwing words at me, right? I would label you and the organization as well, right? So it's saying, how do you respectfully represent the organization and respectfully represent yourself? Um, in all that, in every conversation, right? And phone etiquette in different organizations have different practices, and also they have different processes. I want to give us a quick, um, let me see, activity. Yeah. So if a customer were to call you at this moment, I want us to walk, walk us through your step-by-step -step process from the moment you pick up the call to the end of the call where you solve your problem. So think about it. If a customer calls you right now, what's the first thing you do? I know the first thing you do is to pick the call. So what's the first thing you do after picking the call? What's the next thing you do? What's the third thing you do up until the point where you end the call? I want us to think about it next one minute. Think about it carefully. Think about it carefully. Um, and I'd like you to drop your responses in the chat. What's the first thing you do? What's up until the last thing? The customer calls in right now. First thing to the last thing. Okay, I think I see Adora. Um, do you mind coming off mute and pronouncing your name? Um, Adora. Because in my head, I'm, I'm saying Adora. Adora, okay. 
Are you there? Yes, I am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Sorry if I murdered your name. Sorry. Okay, my name is Adore. Adore. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, what's your step by step process? Okay. I'm currently working as a customer support, but we do more of sending of messages, a little of calls. So what the first thing you do when you do receive a call from a customer is you greet, you introduce your company to them. Then you ask them how you will be able to assist them. They tell you their complaints, which you would quietly listen and guide them through it. After guiding them through the complaints, ensure that they, they've understood what uh, the solution is rendered to them, then we thank them. Yeah, we, we usually thank them for calling and that's it. Then later on, we do follow up if the issue has been resolved. So that is just our step. Amazing, amazing. Right. Um, Thank you very much. And I think that's mm -hmm. it, right? right. Um, and I see many comments in the chat, right? So you read the person, you introduce your company, introduce yourself, um, state your business, attend to the customer's needs, and then you close the call. Closing the call basically is by appreciating them, thank you, and asking them if there's any other thing you'd like them to, any other thing they would like you to do for them, right? And I think some organizations ask a specific question, are you satisfied with our service, right? So basically all of us seem to have a basic understanding of these things, right? Um, which is good, good. So Mitchell says, greet, acknowledge the customer first, introduce yourself, ask how you can be of service. Um, some other person added, mention the name of your company. Um, I said, if you want to introduce yourself, right? So basically all of all these things are great. Also, um, I think there's one that I see from Abin Bola. Use your verbiage, then you ask, how may I help or assist you? Then you listen actively, then you authenticate before you now apologize, then render a solution and friendly. All right, so it seems like Abimbola is a manager at the call center. Um, Abimbola, am I wrong? Because you seem to have more detail. Right, however, this is the yeah, basic so protocol. Well, Hello? Okay. Mola, you seem to be breaking. You said I was fine. I said I'm not sure I work as a person. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Someone so is this... Ah, I'm not on the video shake. All right. Please can someone switch off. All right. Great. So phone call process is uh this is basically the phone call process for any conversation. And I also like to add some organizations have their standard process. So this is like a basic format, right? Some organizations might have the particular words you're supposed to say. For example, you call MTN, the first thing you say is hello, right? So basically, um, different organizations, if you have any question, question, you just type them in the chat. Uh, and question about the three things we talked about today, basically. The three um, things from customer service to emotional intelligence and to phone etiquette, right? If you have questions, please drop it in the chat in the next two, next one minute. Okay, I see Bamadili's hand up. Um, Dili, do you have a question? Bye, Ramli. Um, seems like okay. I think I'll take you because you've not spoken before. Um, please come up with and share. All right. Thanks so much, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to ask this particular question, particularly in relation to 
most of our telecommunication companies in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Now, they will give you terms and conditions in relation to a particular tariff. Like now, let me try to, okay, let me be diplomatic. There's a particular telecom company in Nigeria, a multinational one for that matter. They will tell you that when you do a night plan on a particular tariff, you can access that particular plan from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning. And more often than not, when you subscribe to the plan, at least now the, the network, the, and it will be so apparent and a corporate mafia reason. All the time, we are sorry for the night plan that is malfunctioning. When you try to use your regular data that you bought with money, it will go. So I just want to, I want you to shed more light on something like that, particularly when you get across to them and they are trying to say a lot of things, but you are trying to sense discrepancies in what the customer service agent is saying. Know fully well that he or she is trying to protect the image of the company. Thanks so much. Uh, what do you mean? So, because of time. Okay. Yes, you can use the same phone call process, um, Obanola. Um, Victor is asking what are the five elements of emotional intelligence? So, we have self awareness, so emotional intelligence. All right. So about the training. So our training is a seven-day training. I know some of us have um, might have not heard about our training before, but our call center and um, customer service training is a seven-day training. Um, give me a moment. Yes, nine a.m. to two p.m. daily. It is collaborative, meaning that it requires group participation. And it's hands-on. We train for people to be able to do things as opposed to people be able to know stuff. So what that means, we don't want you to have the information in your head. So there will be many practical sessions which the training will, be, will require you to do, right? And there are assessments at the end of the training as well. Um, you will also learn practical things like I already said. We want you to be able to do the things that we teach, not just be able to know, oh, this is what I should do, or you should do the things that we teach. And also at the end of training, you get a certificate. And so that's why we had this um, session as a snippet of what the training covers. Also, the training is, the cost of the training basically is 50,000 naira. Uh, because we are a nonprofit, and our goal is to ensure that every young African has the ability to become what they want to. And we want to do that by highly subsidizing the training to 5,000 naira so that everybody can afford the training and go to the training. And like we said, the training is for people who are aspiring to come into customer service roles and um, or if you're already there, you want, to, you want to improve your skills as well. So the training is 5,000 Naira today up until Monday for people who registered today and Monday. And the cost goes back to the original cost um, starting from Tuesday morning, right? So if you would like to register, it's advisable you register today. The training is 5,000 hours from today till Monday, right? And the registration link will be dropped in the chat. Uh, but before then, here are the, this is the course content, right? You get to go through all of these, introduction to the call center, effective communication, exceptional customer service, problem solving, emotional intelligence. And we talk about time management as a customer service uh, agent. How do you ensure you don't waste time talking to a customer, right? Also, what are the standard operating procedures at, at a call center? Phone etiquette, who am I at work? And then we have a phone etiquette assessment. So this is a big assessment, which determines your final score at the end of the training. And at the end, we believe that everybody who would be coming into the job of uh, call center agents or customer service representative, you need to ace 
job interviews. So we have an interviewing class, which is a bonus for you to be able to you know, get the jobs of call center agents or customer service agents, right? So all of these are what we are subsidizing for 5,000 R. And if you would like to be part of that, the link will be shared with you to register, right? So we we'll come to the end of today's um, today's taster session.